back at home after the off day to take on the Red Sox here for the second time this season at Doran Park. I'm Ali Navarrete alongside Cam Mana and Matt Scalzo as always. And Matt, we haven't seen YD in a while. Talk about the last time we were at Red Wilson Field. Yeah, it was 16 games ago the last time we placed or faced off against YD, and it was a 4-3 loss in extra innings, a walk-off sack fly for the Red Sox. And that was a close game for these two teams and one for Bourne where it felt like it kind of slipped away. They were down early, battled back, felt like they had a chance, but couldn't find a way to get it done. It was a smaller park. They just It was two meetings at YD where they just couldn't really get their offense into gear, but had a chance in that game, couldn't get it done. They're hoping to come back, find the same success they had the first time around here at Dorn Park against YD. Hoping to contribute to that success will be Bryce Cunningham. He's back on the mound today, making his first start since appearing in the All-Star game. Cam, what can we expect from Bryce? Well, you need, you need a win. You hand the ball to Bryce. 1-0 so far in his summer. 1.37 ERA has shown he's one of the top pitchers and the top right-handers throughout the Cape League as a starting pitcher, above 20 strikeouts. And the days off for him were good after the All-Star game. You want to keep your top horse ready and ready to go as the playoffs uh, dwindle in. This will be his last start in the regular season. But he's looked very good. A guy that when he's on the mound boosts confidence to the Bravos as a whole. So Bourne really needs a win today, and Cunningham's the right guy on the mound. Meanwhile, some lineup changes. Some guys are back. Some guys are in new places. Matt, talk about it. Yeah, so the big one is Derek Bender's back in the lineup. He tweaked his hamstring a little bit in game one of the doubleheader against Wareham. Now he's back in the order. He's DHing tonight, so Scott Landers being cautious with him. Don't want to put him back in the field in case he re-aggravates anything in that hamstring. And then looking defensively, Jonathan Vastine, who's played every game at shortstop so far, makes a switch to the right side of the infield. He'll be at second base, and JKG slots in at short. It's not too big of a change, but it's something that just catches your eye a little bit, just switching up the order and trying to find balance around that lineup. And then, of course, Bryce Evelyn's over at third. He's found his home there a little bit, too. Meanwhile, some serious playoff implications today. We're at that time of year. Cam, talk about how the Bourne Braves could potentially get into playoffs today. Well, it's as simple as this. Bourne wins, Wareham loses, Bourne is in, they clinch, and that's going to be what it is for the final five games of the season. Bourne just needs to win one, the Gateman need to lose one, and the Bravos are in. Four teams have already clinched, two in the East and two in the West, and found within Bourne right now in a good spot to clinch, but just looking for, you know, to stay consistent with the win here, and the Gateman will play Hyannis tonight, so that's a one of the hottest teams right now on the Cape in second spot in the West. So Bourne, all they can control is win here tonight against YD. We'll see if the Braves can get a win over the Red Sox and clinch playoffs tonight, first pitch at six. Here pregame with Kendall Diggs of Arkansas. Kendall, you landed yourself on SportsCenter Top 10 for the second time this season. You weren't even supposed to be an outfielder until right before your college season, you told me. Now you're playing it every single night for Bourne. What's the transition been like from infield to outfield for you? Uh, yeah, it's definitely been uh, different, but it's super exciting. You know, uh, it's just an everyday thing, you know, getting out there, getting live reps. It's a huge thing. Uh, and talking with my coaches at Arkansas, and it's the same here. You know, just want to get better uh, day in and day out. I've been enjoying it a lot, the whole process. It's been really fun. Like I said, you managed to get on Sports Center Top 10 for the second time this season because of crazy athleticism out there. What is your approach playing in the outfield defensively? Yeah, I really love it. You know, I feel like you can show your athleticism a little more, you know, running down balls, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's been, uh, yeah, it's been really fun. Uh, just really uh, put my body out there on the line. I love it. You know, going out there, jumping after balls, all that kind of stuff. But uh, it's been really fun, and uh, I think it's my outfield game's been really improving, just getting the reps every single day. You also had a ton of family watching at Doran Park. They'll be back tonight. They've been here all week. What's it like having your whole family supporting you in Cape Lake Baseball? Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, I remember the first time I saw him. It felt like I hadn't seen him in forever. Uh, but, yeah, it's really good. I got my uh, parents, brothers, grandparents, uncle some family friends out here and they uh so they're all coming to the games and then treating the rest of it like a vacation so it's just been a it's been an awesome week it's flown by honestly with having them here but uh yeah definitely blessed that they could come down and watch us play let's talk about your offense a little bit i've noticed you exercise a lot of patience at the plate draw a lot of walks what's been your approach there yeah 100 percent uh that's what i you know i've always took pride in i think ever since i you know almost got to high school i feel like i've always walked a lot but uh yeah you know i don't mind hitting with two strikes and with this league and the arms we're seeing every single day it hasn't always worked out but um trying to stick true to my approach all that kind of stuff and i think it's been doing you know really well i feel like i'm getting better every every day every single day and uh you know uh, maybe the results aren't always there but i think that's if you look at the process as a whole and just trying to grow every single day it's been it's been really successful in that way so I was going to say, the last time we talked, we talked about how it was hard getting adjusted to wood. Yeah. I think in the last week, you've been really good at the plate, drawing some hits, extra base hits. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's been starting to come a little bit more naturally? Yeah, 100 percent. I think with baseball, you know, it is pretty up and down. But it's, uh, yeah, it's came around a little bit. Uh, I've hit some balls hard, really right at people. And I've hit some, you know, little dribblers that maybe come off the bat at 40 miles an hour. And then those end up being a hit. So, you know, on paper, it's maybe kind of a little bit all over the place. But I think just growing as a player as a whole out here, it's been a great experience. 
today taking on YD. That's the best team in the other division. How are the vibes? How are you guys feeling about this one? Yeah, we're super, super excited. I uh, had an off day yesterday. Everyone got rested up. So hopefully come out with a lot of energy and ready to go. Awesome. Thank you, Kettle. Thank you. Here pregame with the beat reporter from YD, Ben Strober. Ben, welcome to Doran Park. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. Happy to be back here. It's the second and last time we'll be here. So just going to try to enjoy ourselves here. You guys have already clinched a playoff spot. You're number one in the East right now. What are you looking to get done here today at Doran? Well, we just want to lock up home field advantage for sure. I mean, since we clinched the playoff spot and we had that four-game winning streak, we tailed off a little bit, the bats cooled off. So I think we're just looking to get back on track and get back to the approach that they had on that four-game winning streak. Is there anyone in this YD lineup that you're looking to today to get some things done on offense? Definitely RJ Austin. The hitting coach specifically, they've been working a lot on him, kind of not raising up his hands when he goes back in his approach. And since he's really corrected that, we've seen him break off a couple three-hit games, and he's really started to pick it up here towards the end of the season. Finnegan Wall on the mound for you guys today. What should we expect from him? He's one of the more reliable arms this YD team has had all season. He's a guy, you know what you're going to get out of him. He's going to go out there, he's going to throw strikes, and he's going to pitch to contact a lot. He's not a huge strikeout guy, but, you know, that's what Coach Pickler likes. He likes a guy that throws strikes, lets the defense get the work done behind him, and, you know, can expect that from him. Meanwhile, anyone in this Bourne lineup who you've had your eyes on this season? Uh, definitely Hugh Pinckney. I mean, he's been one of the stellar people out of Rutgers, and we've seen a lot of good stuff from him, Derek Bender as well. So. Just those two guys, and really, this born lineup is dangerous, and they can break through at any moment. So YD will have to be on their toes about that. Yeah, last, last couple of meetings between our two teams, what did you notice in those? A really tightly contested match with that last one, of course, the dub lead walk-off sack fly that happened in the 10th inning. I mean, there was the, the really close, the hit-by-pitch call, Nathan Archer there. But there's been some really good matches. The last time we were here, we had six errors, which I believe was a Cape League record. So since then, I think our defense has really tightened up a little bit, and we'll have to make sure that we correct that today. It should be a really good game, though, between both these teams. Awesome. Thank you, Ben.